Hey, welcome back to the Leash Mind podcast, mental health and dog training. I'm your host, Mandy Bautel. On today's episode, I am going to talk with you guys a little bit about my personal experience with our former senior dog, Pip. Um, so if you are new to following us, maybe you didn't really follow Woof Culture and you're just catching wind of us. Um, Pip was our senior dog that we had from October 2019 to June 2022. Um, so we didn't have him a very long time, but it was a long time in my book. So um, hmm, trying to figure out where I should start with this. So Pip had canine cognitive disorder syndrome or dysfunction syndrome. Some people call it different things. Uh, but a lot of times you'll just see the abbreviation of CCDS. That is what that means. Um, it's essentially like Alzheimer's for dogs. They just start having cognitive decline. And so when we adopted him in October 2019 from Muttville in San Francisco, if you don't know who Muttville is, they are just a very well-known um, senior dog rescue. So they pull senior dogs from shelters all over California and try to adopt them out so that, you know, anyone that is wanting to take care of an older dog, that is where you go in the Bay Area. So we adopted Pip. He was about nine. They always list dogs as like around eight to 10 years old, but we think he may have been older than that. We'll never actually know. Um, his health records were extensive. He had had a lot of health problems before we adopted him. So I, I went in knowing all of this. I went in knowing that I would <laughs> have a very good relationship with my vet and he would be on medication until his last days. I, I went in knowing all this. I was prepared. I wasn't prepared for the extent and, and, and how it would deteriorate my mental health caring for him. Um, and I, I don't speak about this a lot, mainly because Unless you have dealt with separation anxiety personally it, to this extent, you will never know where I'm coming from with this. Um, and, and it's been it was really hard for me to navigate that with friends that didn't have a training background or didn't understand behavior, didn't understand separation anxiety. Um, but I'll get into that more. So um, the first like six months to a year we had PIP. Things were fine. Um, so so literally when I was signing the contracts to adopt him in October, they dropped the, oh, by the way, he has separation anxiety bomb after I had signed the contract. And I was just like, are you fucking joking me? Like, And at the time, my husband was a CSAT certified separation anxiety trainer. So I'm like, that's fine. We've got it in the bag. Like, we know how to work on this. And we did. We worked on it and we were able to leave him for an hour or two at a time. We worked up to it. Um, he, you know, we did the whole protocol. But then I got into training. I quit doing less dog walking because, um, you know, I had the perfect setup for him. Dog with set banks, no problem. He can come dog walking with me. But as soon as I decided to go into training full time, we were like, shit, what are we going to do? He, he, there's no way he was going to be OK with six to eight hours at home by himself, even with his sister. So. We put him in daycare. Love daycare. He did great. The daycare that uh, we used, they were phenomenal. We had a great relationship with them because we um, sent a lot of clients to them and we had a really just we had a great relationship. So they really understood uh, Pip's needs. So he loved it. Like half the time he would be like, bye, mom, when I would drop him off or he would be like, no, dad, I don't want to leave. Like he would love daycare. So we were like, great. Like that's the solution. Then the pandemic happened and it was great because I never left Pip. And so we were just like, all right, we're going to move to Oregon, figure it out. Going to be with our Sepp Inks dog all the time. He's going to be fine. His health took a hit around June 2020. Um, it was it was so if you I mean, anyone that experienced 2020, you knew how hard it was to get in with a vet and, and getting into the vet in a state that I didn't really know where to find a good vet. I lived on the rural coast where, you know, rural vets, they have a different way of approaching things. Um, not the way the vets in, you know, say the Bay Area or like Portland would handle things uh, behavior wise. And so that was a nightmare to try and navigate. You know, they kept giving me different answers, giving me runarounds, having me try different medication that didn't help him. 
And I was just like, oh, my God, they're going to kill my dog. And so I stopped listening to the vets, figured out what worked for him, um, got a re-diagnosis of all the issues he had with when he was in Muttville. So I was just like, all right, I know where to go from here, more or less. Um, I it, it was expensive trying to figure it out and we didn't have the money. So we did the best we could. Um, his health got better. But then since we weren't able to work on the separation anxiety because we had nowhere to go um, and we were with him all the time and we were in the country and I'm like, like, how are we going to practice this? Um, I, I couldn't even leave him in the other room without him freaking out. And I just was like, OK, this is more than like normal seppings because <clears throat> um, he could be left alone, a house full of people. And that's how I knew that it wasn't seppings because when he could be left alone with Josh, Penny, a house full of people, and he would still be in catatonic freak out mode. Where's mom? I need mom. I am not okay until mom is here. And I was just like, well, shit. So it's tied to me. Like, this isn't normal. We just, it was really hard to try and figure it out when we lived with family at the time. We lived on the coast. So it was really hard trying to navigate it. And we're just like, okay, we're just going to put our heads down and not leave the dog. And if we need to leave, we take him with us, which is fine. He was great in the car. He did great um, sitting in the car with Penny when we needed to go into places. Um, but a lot of the time, I didn't go anywhere. So let that sink in for a minute. Like, I, I couldn't even go to the grocery store. I couldn't go to a doctor's appointment. I couldn't, you know, just walk outside by myself without him, without him tripping over his legs, almost breaking them, running down the stairs to chase me and find me because he would get so panicked if I wasn't within X amount of feet of him. I'm not exaggerating this. This was my life. And this is why I didn't talk about it for so long, because I feel like no one would understand me or believe me. Um, and I mean, it's my burden to <laughs> shoulder. I didn't want to put that on anyone. So uh, fast forward to August 2020, um, our dog Penny, who Josh had from the time he was 19, um, she got really aggressive cancer. There was no way around it. It had metastasized everywhere. It was all over her entire body and we couldn't, there's nothing we could do. Um, that was, 2020 was a shit year, <laughs> but that was icing on the cake. It was just like, I'm done. Like we're losing our favorite dog, like not favorite, but she was just, you know, she was Josh's baby. So it, it really sucked. Um, so she passed away uh, like mid August, 2020. And we were worried that would affect Pip because they were pretty bonded, uh, more bonded than I've seen between other dogs in a while. Um, he handled it okay, but the Sepangs definitely took a turn with that because he didn't have her to support him, turn to. Like, he always would find her and, like, get comfort from her and, and cuddle with her and stuff. And, and not having that anymore really changed things. Um that's a whole other thing about grief and dogs that we could talk about in another episode. But so that really, it took a turn. And then December 2020, we bought our home, moved, and then don't do what we did. We, we bought our home December 17th, 2020, and we brought home Fern January 7th, 2021. We were barely moved into our new home. and We're like, let's get a puppy. That's a great idea. Um, but so we brought Fern home and we were just like, okay, well, we'll maybe puppy will give him more of support. And, and, you know, it was clear that that was 2021, like it was, his time was gonna, in the next two years, we knew it was getting close because of how his cognitive state had been declining and his, his physical state was declining immensely. Like he really took a turn. And so we were just like, all right, like. It's going to give him the best last couple of years. We don't know how long this is going to go. I started acupuncture with him. I started seeing a vet behaviorist. Um, we worked with Dr. Volley with Synergy Behavior Solutions. Awesome. They were so supportive, um, their, their whole staff, when we were going through that because I just I felt like I was at my wit's end and I didn't know what to do. Um, and so we got him on a supplement and different um, SSRIs and that helped. A little bit. 
But with canine cognitive disorder, it's like Alzheimer's. There isn't a magical pill or a supplement that you can give them. And it's like, oh, my dog's back. It was just like, oh, he he's making eye contact again. He's responding to his name a little bit more. He seems a little more bright eyed and less um, foggy, uh, kind of cloudy eyed. Like This is good. And so, you know, I, I did get a few more enjoyable months with him. And it seemed like he he was feeling better about things, but I could still see that he wasn't he wasn't my normal, my, my same Pip that he was. Um, for those of you, I guess I should show you if you're watching on YouTube, if you don't know who Pip is, you maybe are new here, haven't been following Move Culture very long. Um, this was Papa Pip, my little red boy. He's a little frosty, little frosty, frosty face. Best little man. Um... So, yeah, so we worked with uh, Synergy. They helped us form a game plan. And then that was like probably March 2022. So we got a several good months and it went really well. And then maybe a month, month and a half before he uh, we made the decision, he just declined. It was really bad. And I think I need to explain just how bad the separation anxiety was, because I'm sure a lot of you were like, well, Mandy, you were married to a CSAT trainer. Like he knew what he was doing. He had a lot of separation anxiety clients and we knew how to tackle it. And we had gotten Pip to a good point X amount of years ago. But with canine cognitive disorder, you it's like playing the slots. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know what's going to change, but you can't change it. So my grandmother had um, Alzheimer's. So I have a, a deep understanding of cognitive decline and, and how you know, you can't really change it. You just kind of got to go with it and give them the best time as possible and not confuse them too much, not stress them out or upset them. Um, just kind of keep it steady. So that's what we did for Pip. And it, that was, I loved him so much. And I would never take back that experience. Oh, I'm going to get choked up. I would never take back that experience, but it, it deteriorated my mental health. Um, and I think that's why I started paying attention to my mental health so much more because I was stuck at home. I couldn't leave. I couldn't, like I said, you know, and it got worse after we got our house. You know, I couldn't, we had baby gates up because we had fern. I, I, I'm not exaggerating or being ridiculous when I say that I couldn't walk into the bathroom and leave him in the kitchen with Josh without him going catatonic and screaming like I had left him on the side of the road, like just so bad. So he would claw at the gate and freak out and I never wanted him to hurt himself. So I was living my life for my dog. Again, I won't take that experience away. I will never regret adopting Pip. He taught me so much, and I love that dog so much. Um, but that was really a point where I was just like, I can't live like this anymore, and we don't have a solution. You know, I couldn't, and this is why I have only dog trainer friends because they are the people that understand this the most and don't make you feel like shit or like you're being utterly ridiculous not leaving your dog home alone. I did have a friend that I had made locally um, where we moved, and I was constantly made to feel like I was ridiculous for having to bring my senior dog with me if I wanted to go get coffee, or it was ridiculous that I couldn't leave my house because of my dog. Um, I couldn't leave him with my husband. Like, what? I'm crazy. And I finally just had to stop being friends with that person because I was like, you're 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 diminishing what is really a struggle for me. You're making me feel like this isn't real and like I'm being ridiculous. Like, fuck right off. Because any of my friends that understand separation anxiety understood how bad it was. And I only told a couple friends because it's just not everyone is going to be understanding or understand the severity of it. Um, so, I mean, I... I didn't see the doctor for two years because I couldn't go in person. Um, and if you are a woman, you know you have to go and get certain appointments every X amount of years. And I had to put that off. I couldn't go to the dentist. I couldn't 
go to a movie. I couldn't go get dinner with my husband. I couldn't, you know, the last time we had a date was in 2019. So how do you think that affected my marriage? It was a lot. I, I, my life was on hold for my dog. I loved him so much and I would never take that back. But dealing with the cognitive decline on top of the separation anxiety, it was so much on me. And it's not that I didn't have support. I had support. I had people I could talk to. But, you know, when you want to talk to people about it or you do feel like opening up about it, you feel like a burden because it's just like, hey, here's my really heavy, sad stuff. By the way, I'm not able to leave my house. I haven't left my house in two years. Like, that's heavy. It's not something you want to drop on a lot of people. And it's not something I really wanted to broadcast on woof culture because I didn't need the sympathy because it wasn't going to help me in the moment. And it was really personal and it was a struggle for me. Um, like, I, I, if you have separation anxiety with your dogs, you experience that, you are working through it. I know. I know how hard it is. Um, and going through it with the senior dog and experiencing the cognitive decline it's hard it's it's very hard um and you just want to help them the best way you can and you can't and it breaks your heart um so i mean we got a fixer upper we needed to go to the store anytime we needed to go anywhere pip was with us pip was with us in the car he would go with me into lowe's if i could bring him like anywhere i could go with the dog he came with me but for those two years, you know, 2020 to 2022, I didn't leave the house. If I left the house, I just sat in the car with Pip. I'm not even exaggerating. That was what I did. Like, because I just, I needed to get out of the house, but I couldn't go in anywhere without him freaking out. Because around like, I want to say like early 2022, I couldn't, we couldn't put him in the car anymore. It, it got to the point where even being alone in the car was too much for him. And that's where I was like, okay shit's changing because he used to be able to handle that and now he can't handle that so it's like well fuck there goes my life so and it was rough you know I couldn't take care of myself I had to prioritize my dog over everything else I couldn't make doctor's appointments I couldn't go hang out with friends I, I had no life for the last you know two three years it was it was rough um and you know sometimes I think like would I do it again no but hear me out I couldn't have anticipated that. I couldn't have anticipated him developing canine cognitive disorder. I couldn't have anticipated the pandemic. I couldn't have anticipated how his separates was going to get worse. I'm grateful that I got to experience that and, and experience that relationship because our bond was incredible. Before his cognitive decline, our, our bond was really it was something else. He was my heart dog. And it was a great experience. And I learned so much about myself and about how I want to approach my relationship with my dogs in the future. But I don't wish anyone to go through that because I didn't think I was going to make it through that. It was so intense. Um, I'm getting choked up because it's just you don't realize like when you don't have a dog that has separation anxiety, you don't realize the freedom you have. Um, and I know I sound ridiculous getting emotional about it, but, you know, it really screwed up my mental health. And when we finally made the decision to, you know, when, when you have a very old dog, people tell you that you will just know. And it's true. You will just know. There's just, you know, your dog and there are signs and they just, you know, they tell you that they're ready. And so we made that decision. We did it at home. That's just something we've always preferred when we have had to go through euthanasia. We, we, we always do it at home when we can. And so we did it at home. It was a very, very good experience. Um, he was very relaxed. We had Fern go hang out with family for a couple hours so that we could focus on Pip. And when we made that decision, it was incredibly hard, but I didn't want to see him suffer anymore. Um, but the few days afterwards were very hard for me. I didn't realize, you know, I was a shut in for two and a half, three years. Like I really, I did not get out. If I got out, I got out with Pip. 
So he was kind of my security blanket and, and helped me when I had social anxiety. My social anxiety was through the roof. I couldn't even be in public without panicking and thinking that I needed to rush home to Pip or rush home to Fern so that she didn't develop sepanks. Like I was constantly worried about that. I couldn't relax leaving the house. It was stressful for me. Um, we're a year out now almost, and I, I'm better about leaving the house, but it's still hard. You know, we we had like our first date for the first time in like two years, and it was just like, wow, we really did like alter our lives for that dog. Um, and I'm grateful that we were able to because I know that's not the case for so many people. We are very lucky, and I'm so grateful that we were able to accommodate his decline and his severe separation anxiety the way we were because there was no alternative. Um, I'm very grateful that we were able to work from home and I could just ride it out with him. But there's something to say about, you know, being a caregiver for a dog in that situation and taking care of yourself. So the only thing I could do was be at home and, and work out and work. And that's all I focused on. And it was quite an experience. So this wasn't really to be informative about like separation anxiety or canine cognitive disorder syndrome. It was just to share my experience with that because I think a lot of times when we think of caring for our animals, especially as they get older and they age and decline, we don't think of the impact on us because it's just like, give them a good end of life. Give them a great. I did all that. And I would do it again for him if I could. I, I gave him a fabulous end of life. Like he got to, you know, be a dog walking dog. He got to go to daycare. He got to go to work with mom most of the time. We moved and lived with family on, um, you know, an acre of property. He got to go chase deer. He got to see foxes in real life. Like he, ha he got to go to the beach. We went on so many hikes. Like we had a great last few years together when he could still hike and stuff. But the last like, you know, seven to eight months of his life, they were rough. And it was hard seeing our puppy so full of life and our very, very old senior dog that was sick and declining. That contrast, it was very clear to me of we're getting close. Um, so yeah, I don't know where to end this or where to wrap this up, but that was an experience. And I don't think that we really consider our mental health when we're caring for animals with these specific needs. And, you know, if you are noticing some cognitive decline in your dog or you're noticing the severe settings, get the help you can get if you can. Um, I know it's not cheap working with a vet behaviorist. I know. But I made it work how I could because I needed the help. I couldn't have navigated it without them. It's not like there is a, oh, here, this is the answer and this is what's going to fix it. And it's it's kind of just figuring out how to get through it. But I not a lot of people know I went through that because I, you know, I try to be as open as possible. But that experience was so taxing on my mental health that it's hard to find a time to open up about it and share that. Um, because so many people, they, they want to give you sympathy and, and you know, commiserate and, and um, bond, share their stories with it and their experiences with it and try to give you solutions. But in the moment, all you need is someone that understands whether they have gone through that or not or, you know, they just understand the situation and they're there for you. And I'm so grateful that I had the friends that I had when I was going through that because it was such a rough time. Um, it, saying goodbye to a dog in general is a very hard thing, but when you've had to alter your life for that dog for X amount of years, it's it's a different type of grieving for sure. Because I not only had to grieve Pip, but I kind of had to grieve a version of myself that I had to become for him, if that makes sense. Um, I kind of just had to put all my stuff on the back burner and prioritize him and take care of him so that we could just get through it. And that's how the last two years felt. I was literally just getting through it for him um, and waiting for him to tell me when he was ready to leave. And it happened and it was sad. And I missed that fr frosty, frosty, foxy boy every day. That's 
I just, I love looking at this photo of him. If you're looking on YouTube, he just, he just had the best little clip. Um, and he was just the best boy. Um, and, and he's the reason that we named Fig Fig is because when we lived on the coast with the family, they had fig trees in <laughs> and he would and see you're able to share these fun stories so that's what makes me you know that's what I think about when I think of Pip and so he would <laughs> they'd leave the doors open because the property was fully fenced off and I'd be like where's Pip where is he and if I didn't see him in the house he would be under the fig tree hoovering up all the figs that fell and he'd walk back up all round and full of figs and I'm like you're fig fat like <laughs> And so when we got Fig and we brought him home, I was like, I wanted to stay in the same realm of naming our animals um, kind of outdoorsy, like fern is a fern. So I was just like, oh my God, we have to name him Fig. Like it's Pip's favorite fruit. So that's how we came up with the name Fig for our cat. Um, funny way to end this, but it kind of comes full circle. And I know I sound a little woo-woo saying this, but we definitely see uh, variations of Pip through Fig. Just there are a lot of a uh, lot of uncanny coincidences where we're like, yeah, I mean, Fig was born around the time like Pip passed. Maybe there was some connection. I know I sound ridiculous. I know how science works. I know that's not a thing, but. I like to think of that because it makes me feel good. But I hope that if you are going through separation anxiety or you are witnessing cognitive decline in your own animals, that you know you are less alone in that. And I'm happy to talk about that and, and be that support because it's hard and it takes a village and you need all the support you can get. So I hope somebody finds some benefit in this episode. And if you found this podcast helpful, you like what we're doing here at The Leash Mind, leave a comment, subscribe, like, tag us on social media. Just give us a little R+. And we'll be back with another episode.